Hello everyone, my name is Apple Guy, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. In the previous video, we set off to find our dear friend Navi, however instead ended up being cursed as a Deku, as we end up here in the land of Termina, particularly Clock Town. So, in today's video, we're going to be exploring Clock Town to the best of our abilities. Let's talk to Tattle first. Hey, aren't you going to the Great Fairy Shrine near the North Gate? Whoa, look at the time! You don't even have three days left! Right, so we learned in the previous video, which if you haven't seen yet, you should go watch that, because that explains a lot about the game, that we have three days to do everything we need to do, because if we aren't done in three days, then the Happy Mask Salesman must leave, or something. We don't actually know why we only have three days, but, well, we'll find out eventually. We're here in Clock Town, this is the main area of the, uh, game, sort of like the hub area. It's divided into north, south, east, west, and an area called the Laundry Pool. Here we are in East Clock Town right now. Very, very cool place to be. Um, we're actually only here for a quick minute because we're going to rotate now into North Clock Town. It's set out like a compass and that actually corresponds to the different gates you can go through. So this is the area known as North Clock Town. It's pretty great. It's uh, where we actually need to end up being. So why don't we head to North Clock Town first and into the Great Fairy Shrine where we are told we need to be because the Great Fairy can help us apparently. Isn't that wonderful? Aren't you guys excited to have help from the Great Fairy? Well, we can walk forward, and that fairy doesn't look so great. Oh no! The Great Fairy! Let's go up and talk to what remains of the Great Fairy, I suppose. Young one, please hear my plea. I've been broken and shattered to pieces by the masked Skull Kid. Please find the one stray fairy lost in town and bring her to this fairy fountain. Okay, cool. So, we need to get the stray fairy to come back here, and they will all combine together to make the regular Great Fairy. Pretty simple task, not too difficult. All right, so this is our first little quest here. There's a lot going on in each of the areas of the town that I'm gonna be brushing over at first, but I'll be going back in more detail. Clock Town has a great theme, by the way, guys. So here we are back in South Clock Town. Let's head over here to Western Clock Town. Yes, yes, into the west we go. Little panoramic of each area. Nice thing going on here. Western Clock Town, okay. First things first we're going to do here is actually we're going to check in with this gentleman here. He is the banker. Hey there, little guy. Won't you deposit some rupees? Nowadays, even if people don't have money, they don't deposit anything. Nothing, nothing. So for a limited time, I'll give you a special gift based on how much you deposit. For example, if you deposit 200 rupees, you'll get an item that holds a lot of rupees. So what will it be? We're going to deposit rupees into the bank and we can give him only 37 because that's what we have in our inventory. You might be thinking, why would you deposit uh, so many rupees? And, uh, eh, just a good place to hold them. Hmm, Link is it? Got it, I won't forget your deposits. Let me stamp you with my special ink. Hey, relax, it doesn't leave any marks and it's not gonna hurt. There we go, we get stamped. There, now I'll know you when I see ya. All right, little guy, now I've got a total of 37 rupees from you. Come back and deposit some after you saved up a bunch. So instead of maxing out your wallet to, I think it's 99 that you can hold at the start, you can deposit it and, you know, fill it as you go. It's a pretty cool thing. All right, let's head over here now to the laundry pool area, the last area of Clock Town. As I said, I'm kind of speeding through all of these, so nothing uh, too major is going on. But hey, would you look at that? Please hear my plea. The masked skull kid has broken me apart and scattered my pieces. Please find a way to return me to the fairy fountain in North Clock Town. There we go. We are in now have possession of the one stray fairy and we can head to North Clock Town. By the way, Deku Link can hop on water and if he misses his last jump to get on land, if he, I think he has five hops, he will drown and you will lose a heart and get sent back to where you are. Okay, let's head over to North Clock Town then where we need to be. And uh, oh yeah, the dog will attack you if you're a Deku. I think I said that already, but you know, kind of sucks. Okay, let's continue going over here and in. Nice. We do have a lot we need to do in today's video, so I am kind of rushing around. We're going to spend a couple of videos in Clock Town, though, so don't worry. I'm not going to miss out on anything this town has to offer. Okay. Back in the Fairy's Fountain now. We just have to run forward, and we can deposit our fairy. And they will all combine with the power of fairiness. Voila! Oh, it's a different fairy than we've seen in Ocarina of Time, because it has orange instead of pink hair. Although, they look kind of the exact same. Tattle, and you, young one of the altered shape, thank you for returning my broken and shattered body to normal. I am the great fairy of magic. I thought that masked child was helping me, and I grew careless. 
All I can offer you now is this. I shall grant you magic powers as a sign of my gratitude. Please accept it. Whoosh. We are being granted magical powers. Whee! Awesome. And we're getting all woozy doozy. Anyway, we have our magic meter now. That's like, that's that's the big thing we're getting from this. Yeah! <laughs> magic power. You've been granted magic power. In your current form, press B to shoot bubble blasts. Press B, press and hold B to blow a big bubble. Release B to shoot it. Shoot it and our magic power will decrease as long as we use it. The man who lives in the observatory outside of town may know of the Skull Kid's whereabouts, but be careful. You must not underestimate the child's powers, young one. If you are ever returned to your former shape, come see me and I shall give you more help. Boom. That's a future objective. If and only if we are able to return to our normal self. Which I have faith about. Alright, so we're going to leave this area now. And uh, we're actually... Let's see, how are we going to do this? So... Let's head over back to the uh, South Clock Town area. It really bothers me there's no Central Clock Town. You'd think this would be Central Clock Town and there'd be another area called South, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, let's go over here and try and get into this flower, since of course we know how to climb on flowers. Wait, wait, hang on! Oh my gosh, it's another Deku Scrub. Although, instead of a pedal copy, he has like a hat thing or something. I don't know, it's a little weird. Hey, Link, face him! This is my private property. Don't try using it when I'm not around. Okay, looks like he doesn't want us to use his private property. No big deal. Let's head over to uh, West Clock Town then. Or sorry, East Clock Town. And we can see what is going on with the aforementioned observatory. The actual way to the observatory is right here. And uh, oh, this kid is blocking it. That's unfortunate. If you want to pass through here, you have to say the secret code. What's the secret code? Uh, it's one, two, one, five, three, four, two. Wrong! Jim said I can't let anyone who doesn't know the code in. If you're not, okay, oops. Anyway, I skipped his text on accident, sorry. He basically says that if you want to get access there, you need to become a member of their club. It's called the Bombers Club. So uh, this is Jim in North Clonton, let's have a chat with him. What do you want, shrimp? I'm busy practicing with my blowgun. If you can't pop that balloon, don't mess with Jim. Well, I just learned how to blow big bubblegum bubbles, and is it powerful enough to pop a balloon? Somehow it is. And <laughs> look at Jim, he's so excited. See that, Jim? Are you the one who just popped that up there? Not bad for a Deku scrub. We bombers have a hideout that leads to the observatory outside town. You need a code to get in. Maybe I'll tell you what it is. But don't think you're getting it for that easily. I can't just tell you what the code is. I'll have to pass my test first. Are you ready? Yeah, we're ready. All right, line up, guys. Okay. If you can't find all five of us by tomorrow morning, I'll teach you the code. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we have to essentially play hide and go seek tag. It's like normal hide and go seek, but you need to tag the people in order to uh, claim them as being caught. So there's five of them, as, uh, as Jim said. And uh, there we go. We've got two of them so far. There are two in North Clock Town. And then we head over here into East Clock Town for one, I believe. I believe there's only one in here. That kid in the orange cap does not count. He always uh, is there. If we go up here, we'll see a child holding a cuckoo. That's a pretty wild uh, thing we've got going on there. We can catch him. Oh, you caught me. There are only two left. All right, I believe there's a kid somewhere else here. Only one for this area. Okay, only one. No big deal. Two more children to find, and I am doing super great so far. I have until tomorrow morning, and it obviously is not tomorrow morning yet. I don't believe there are any in the main clock town area. What am I adjusting right now? Oh, I, I'm, I'm adjusting my headphones, and I was scrolling something that didn't have any change, and it turned out it was the base. Anyway, here's another child, another bomber. See, they can run away from you. They can be a little finicky. You can just back them into a corner like that. There's only one left now, and I believe, if my memory serves me correct, is he down here? Is he down and over here somewhere? No? Okay. Oh, wait. Do I know where he is? Maybe I don't know where he is. <gasps> no, I might have lost the child. I don't think he's here. I don't think any children are in the laundry pool. Wait, where does that leave? Oh, no. I'm already showing my inability to play the game. Okay, now we're at night of the first day. We have 60 hours left. Uh, that guy, we'll talk to him later. That, that's something we can't do right now. Okay. Hold on a second. 
Uh, if you were a child, where would you be? The children make little uh, bubbly noises when they move around. So if you need to help, you know, find them, you can listen for those. Although I swear there's another child. Ah, oh, there he is. I knew there was another child here. All right, we have to get up here using this leaf or this flower, Deku flower. We can go up here and chase him off the edge and then get him, get him, get him. Come on, Link. You can do this. You're faster than him. Back him into a corner. Oh, we're chasing you into a corner now. Okay. Wow. Oh. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? This way? This way? Can't go this way. Corner. Boom. Oh, no way. You finally got me. There we go. And as you can see, we are now being told the code. You're pretty good for a Deku scrub. If only you were human, then I could give you an original bomber's notebook and make you a member. What do you guys think? No way. No scrubs. A scrub is a guy who thinks he's fly. <laughs> I guess not. Once we let some kid who isn't a human join our gang, and boy, did we ever regret it. Sorry. But I'll teach you the code, just like I promised. I can tell you the code only once, though, so pay close attention. Are you ready? The code is one, not two, one, three, four, five, two. I think I almost guessed it. Okay, so we can go to East Clock Town now and redeem that code. Uh, you're supposed to, like, write that down, but I have you guys to remind me for one, three, four, five, two. And I'll always have this video in order to go back to it. Alright, here we go. We can talk to this guy now. And we have to say the secret code. It is one, three, four, five, two. Um, that's right. If you know the code, then you're a member, right? Okay, here you go. And like the obedient child he is, he would let us through, and uh, there's a cool observatory at the edge of this. Well, the great fairy told us that the observatory might have something good for us, so I guess we can enter their hideout and make our way over there. Pretty weird that they're using this uh, sewer as a hideout, but um, whatever, I guess. Oh, I almost did not make that there. Hey, it's an enemy. No good. That is a... Skulltula. What? You don't even know about the Skulltula? It's protected by a hard shell, but its stomach is soft. We fought these before in our days in the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And I guess he is not a fan of us. We can, of course, pop him with a bubble and then get right through. Okay, here we go. We are faced with yet another Majora... Uh, another mask here. We can pop that balloon. And, uh, yeah, we can climb up. And then into this area, which is the Astral Observatory. We just don't know it yet. Great theme here, by the way. Absolutely stellar theme. Okay, hold on. Let's see what is happening. Okay, so. Oh, oops. I didn't mean to. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No. I, I, ignore him for a second. No, 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 no. Stop talking to me. Stop talking to me. Stop talking to me. Okay. What I was trying to show off is... I guess I can't show it off. Under one of those uh, barrels, there is a dolphin texture printed on the ground, and that is in reference to the codename for the GameCube, which is Dolphin. Let's talk to this man now. Well, well, a strange-looking child has joined me today. Are you a new friend of the Bombers Gang? Hmm, your manners seem much better than those of your mischievous friends from the other day. <laughs> that ill-mannered troublemaker from the other day said he'd break my instruments. He said he'd steal my moon's tear. There was no stopping him. Even now, just watch him. He's probably causing trouble up on the clock tower. Will you gaze into the telescope? We will. All right. So as you can see, we now gain access to the telescope that is for some reason inverted. If we take a peek at the top there, we can see Skull Kid. And he's got the mask that we need to get back. Let's see, what's he looking up at? Oh my gosh. That is a terrifying moon, and the moon is sad. He's crying. And he cried a meteor, <laughs> apparently. And it crash landed right outside. Whoa! Let's look back at the skull kid. Oh, he's spanking himself. He's making he's shaking his tushy at us. What a guy. Okay. Well, did you find that troublemaker? And that loud noise? What was that? Perhaps another moon's tear has fallen nearby. Go through that door and take a look outside. But I wonder how the troublemaker got on top of the clock tower. The only way up there is through the clock door, and that opens only on the eve of the carnival. He is correct in assuming that. You can only get up to the clock tower on the eve of the carnival, which is on the third day, meaning it has to be the night of the third day. You got the moon's tear, its sparkling beauty radiates rather strangely. Okay, so believe it or not, that's everything we need to do in this area of the game. We can now leave the Astral Observatory, 
past the dolphin that we can't see, but is definitely there, and head out the door. We can return to where we were. So, as you can see, we have located Skull Kid, who we need to encounter to get back the Ocarina of Time, as well as the mask that he stole. And uh, in order to do that, of course, we're going to need to climb to the top of the clock tower on the eve of the carnival, aka night of the third day. Okay, now that we've had enough double talk to get around everything, what's up, Tattle? What do you want to say? Alright, so we know where the Skull Kid is. Let's go ask around the clock tower. Maybe we'll learn something. Whoa, look at the time! You don't have three days left! Okay, calm down. I've got plenty of time. Time is my middle name. Probably not. Anyway, let's return to South Clocktown now because we have a brand new thing. A development to be made. Also, spinning is faster. I'm not just doing this on for fun. <laughs> spinning is, is like rolling as regular Link. Okay, so there was this guy over here who was really stingy about his property. Let's see if we can convince him to let us use it. I've already sold out all my wares, and the carnival hasn't even begun. I'm thinking of closing up shop so I can buy a gift for my wife and return to her in my village. I've heard that a stone called the Moon's Tear shines brighter than any other in the land. If you've got one, I'd really like to get it from you. My wife would really love it. If you give it to me, I'll give you my spot here, deck of flower included. So what's cool is we can actually use this opportunity to go into our select item, get the Moon's Tear, and trade it to him just in this menu. That stone! You must hand it over to me! In exchange, I'll give you my spot here, deck of flower included, yes? So we will accept that trade and we will get the land title deed! You really helped me out. Now I have the perfect souvenir for my wife. She hasn't set eyes on a jewel for a strange sparkling stone like this in a long, long time. The title deed for this spot should be in high demand among Deku Scrubs, but you may already know that. If you don't need it anymore, you can always sell it. Okay, this is uh, kind of spoiling something we'll be doing later on, but... Yeah, we can sell our, our land, we can be a real estate agent and pawn off our land onto anyone who wants it. Cool. Alright, so, what's neat about this Deku Flower is that it will allow us to get onto the door of the clock tower. That will, uh, oops, get back up here, Link, come on. Anyway, we'll get on the door of the clock tower and that will allow us to, uh, climb ever so high into the top of the clock tower once the door opens. Now, you might be thinking, well, how are we gonna get there? Well, we actually have to wait. We have to wait until the dawn of the third... Sorry, not the dawn of the third day, the night of the third day. That was the bomb shop. Didn't mean to walk in there. Anyway, if we go into this door over here... No, not this door. I think this is the wrong door. This is the right door. We check over here. There's a scarecrow. We've actually talked to him accidentally already. Yo, hey, baby. I'm a styling scarecrow wandering in search of pleasant music. Time will pass in the blink of an eye if you dance with me. So if you like, baby, we can forget the time and dance till dawn. Shall we dance? If you say yes. Oh, yeah. In that case, forget the time. Let's dance. The scarecrow will dance to Saria's song, which is pretty cool. Although he kind of just looks like a wacky waving arm inflatable tube man. What do I think they're called? Sky dancers? I looked that up once, but I don't exactly remember what they were called. Boom! Dawn of the second day. Cool. Now, you're probably thinking, nice, we got to the dawn of the second day. And, uh, you know? Oh, oops. Well, anyway, ah, uh, stopped speaking. Okay. Well, anyway, we're on the dawn of the second day now, and, uh, we need to get to the, uh, dawn of the third day. I'm sorry, the evening of the third day once again, which means we're gonna dance with the scarecrow four more times. Four more times? Day to night, night to day, day to night, yeah, four more times. So, I hope you enjoy Saria's song and watching this guy flail around. <laughs> Did you see Link? He shakes his head no, he's like, this is stupid. Alright, night of the second day with 36 hours left. Okay, and uh, we can uh, dance until dawn as well. Alrighty, this is just what we have to do. Alternatively, you can wait around forever, or there's a lady who tells stories in one of the houses and you can wait with her, and she will tell you a story that'll last like 24 hours or something. Boom. Okay. Scarecrow, do me a solid and dance me some more. Oh yeah, how was it? It went by in an instant, right? I'm still full of energy. If you'd like, baby, we can forget the time and dance till night. Shall we dance? Yes. Alright, forget the time, and we're gonna dance some more. Have we danced enough yet? Do you guys feel danced out? Well, thankfully, this is going to be the last time we dance with him, and actually, that's probably the last time we're ever gonna talk to this guy. Wow, episode 2 and we're already forgetting characters. Night of the final day with 12 hours remaining. Oh yeah, how was it? I went by an instant, right? I'm still full of energy. 
but outside it seems to have gotten kind of dangerous. Jax, I'm getting out of town. Take care. I know of a mysterious song. Okay, don't stop trying to shove your song down my throat. Anyway, on the night of the third day, he will disappear. And you might be wondering, why is he going to disappear? Well, I actually probably should have paid more attention to this, but if we return to the main area of Clock Town, the south area, and if we look up into the night sky, we can see uh, something we looked through on the telescope. It is the moon. And it is huge, and it is right above us. If you uh, haven't noticed, the moon is uh, getting awfully close to the Earth. No, I don't want to talk to you. Alright, well, let's talk to this man instead. Hey, Deku Kid, you waiting for us to finish the bridge from the Festival Tower to the Clock Tower entrance up there? Sorry, my princess panicked and ran away. This is all we get for a Festival Tower. It's not quite tall enough, is it? Sheesh! Even if we went to the top of the Festival Tower, we wouldn't be able to get up to the Clock Tower entrance. I apologize for all this. I wish I could scare that moon away. Right, so, this is actually a big theme in the game, is the moon approaches the Earth as we get closer and closer to the final day. And, uh, well, people think eventually it's going to crash into the Earth. So, that's what happens in three days. We get these earthquakes, and they get more and more intense as the time continues, and, well, eventually it is going to crash into the Earth, in all honesty. So, everyone leaves town. Remember? You're Deku, so why don't you try using this Deku flower? Whoa, look at the Oh my gosh. Uh, do you not see that I just did that tattle? You're worse than Navi. This is a heart piece. We can pick it up and gain a heart if we get four of them. You got a piece of heart. Collect four pieces of heart to assemble a new heart container. Each new container you put together will increase the amount of life energy you can have. Alright, so I am just waiting for this door to open. The door to the clock tower opens only once a year, at midnight on the eve of the carnival. We have about six hours, six hours, four hours left, and uh, I'm going to save you guys the time of waiting. So I'm just going to very, very quickly... Uh, Pass the time. I'll see you guys in just a second. Alright, it has reached midnight of the final day, and we're celebrating the Clock Tower Festival! Yay! Woohoo! Big explosions, the Clock Tower will rise. And then, I don't really understand the uh, mechanics behind this, but it will fall forwards. Don't really know what that does, in all honesty, but what's more important is the door will open, and it will make a nice staircase for us. Isn't that convenient? Now my question is, how did they build this without the staircase being opened? And if it didn't exist, they built it from the top down? Then, how did they make the staircase close? Don't stop now! Look, you can get up there now! Thanks, Tattle. I was just gonna do that on my own, but no. You can tell me to do it. And here we are, on top of the clock tower. To encounter the Skull Kid. And the moon, I guess. For some reason. Sis! Ah, Tail, we've been looking all over for you two. Hey, Skull Kid, what if you gave that mask you're ba wearing back now? Hey, come on, are you listening? Swamp, mountain, ocean, canyon, hurry, the four who are there, bring them here. Oh! Don't speak out of line, stupid fairy! No! What are you doing to my brother? Skull Kid, don't you still think you're our friend after that? Well, whatever. Even if they were to come now, they wouldn't be able to handle me. <laughs> Just look above you. If it's something that can be stopped, then just try and stop it. Oh, hey! That's actually pretty cool. So, um, uh, 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 uh hold on. I, I, okay, so, in, in, the, in the Japanese version of the game, I'm gonna pause it, sorry. In the Japanese version of the game, uh, they fixed, Japanese version? re-releases, whatever. Anyway, I believe it's one of the versions besides the one I'm playing right now. They fix it so that Skull Kid's scream was a universal sound as opposed to a sound based on location. So if you noticed he was screaming really loud and then we cut over to the, the moon and it stopped and then moved back closer to him and we could hear it again. They fix that in another version so it's universally loud across all times. Cool. Let's take our bubble and spit it at him. Take that, clown. Oh, that's, that's ceramic. That would definitely break if it hit the ground. Well, uh, hey, 
if we uh, get our instrument back, he's the Happy Mass Salesman said he could return us to our normal form. You got the Ocarina of Time back. Princess Zelda gave you this precious instrument. Set it to C and use A in the four C directions to play it. Press the B button to stop. Suddenly, memories of Princess Zelda came rushing back to you. Alright ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the only instance of the, of the character Zelda in this entire game. You're already leaving this land of Hyrule, aren't you? Even though it was only a short time, I feel like I've known you forever. I'll never forget the days we spent together in Hyrule. And I believe in my heart that a day will come when we shall meet again. Until that day comes, please, take this. I'm praying. I'm praying that your journey will be a safe one. If something should happen to you, remember this song. And now she's going to teach us a song. A song that should sound familiar to you guys if you've seen my Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Let's Play. It is the Song of Time. She says, this reminds me of us. Probably because she used it to send me back to the past after I saved her life. And the whole kingdom's life and the whole world's life. So, you know. Yeah. Song of Time. The song that could move blocks back in the day. That's all it did. Anyway, remember the Song of Time, this melody lingering on the edges of your mind is a song of the memories of Princess Zelda. And then this is Link leaving on his horse. We get a weird like flashback to what happened now. The Goddess of Time is protecting you. If you play the Song of Time, she will aid you. That is a great person to have on speed dial. <laughs> oh my lord. And it, it's even greater. We're going to learn about that in the next episode, but you know. Snap out of it! What are you doing, Lost in Memories? Get yourself together! Getting an old ocarina back isn't going to help us. Somebody, anybody, goddess of time, help us, please. We need more time. More time, you say? Well, why didn't you just say so? I happen to have the greatest way to play the Song of Time. Huh? When did you get that instrument? So, yeah, the Ocarina of Time is not the Ocarina of Time when Deku Link plays it. It is, in fact, some horns. A little bit weird. Sorry, I had to remember the Song of Time there as I was talking. Save and return to the dawn of the first day. Yes, we can reset the day cycle. We get this saving screen. This only happens on my release of the game. There we go. And that is the only way to save, by the way. You can't save from the menu. You have to literally play that song. You'll notice all these things flying out of us. We are actually losing all of our items that have quantities. So we'll still have the Deku nuts in our inventory, but it'll be zero. And, you know, that's what I mean. Here we go. We get this weird cutscene of everything happening again. We don't actually have to play through the game. Don't worry. This is like a little recap. Previously on Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Dawn of the first day, 72 hours remain. And just like that, we are back in time. Just as if we started, but now we get to keep the Ocarina of Time. What, what just happened? Everything has... Why is that dog not moving? <laughs> That's a little weird. Start it over. And if we look up, the moon is still miles away. Way too close to be normal, but miles away. What? What are you, anyway? That song you just played. That instrument. That instrument! Wait, that's it! Your instrument! The masked salesman said if we got back your precious thing that was stolen from you, he can return you to normal. Did you completely forget or what? All right, yes, we can head through that door and do all that fun stuff. Stop, dog, I'm trying to end the video. We can do that all in the next episode is what I'm trying to say. This episode has gone on for a very long time, but thankfully we're able to save the game now and we can call it quitsies. So yeah, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. In the next episode of Let's Play Majora's Mask, we're going to be heading into the clock tower and speaking to the happy mask salesman. I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please like and subscribe and tell your friends about the series. If you think they would enjoy it, it means a lot to me when you guys spread my videos around. I'll catch you all back here next time for the next episode of Let's Play Majora's Mask. Until then, as always, take care.